Hello and welcome to another percussion tutorial. This is part four of how to play the bongos. In this episode, I'm gonna go over a couple ideas of playing on the large side of the bongos. In the previous episode, we talked about this small side. Now, in all of the episodes, I mentioned that we, we often call the large side the hembra and the small side the macho. So I'm gonna continue to use those terms. Just wanted to run back over that in case you're jumping in from the beginning. So these lessons are geared towards the beginner, but there's some things that uh, those that are an intermediate and advanced can glean from, hopefully. So before we jump into this lesson, I just wanted to remind you or to inform you, whatever you call it, whatever it is, that if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would love for you to be a part of this subscription family here on my YouTube channel. I got some new music videos or some new videos coming up, uh, music videos, lyric videos, percussion tutorials, vlogs, product reviews, all that good stuff. So yeah, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, that way you'll know of any future videos that will be uploaded. All right, so let's jump into it. Now in all of these videos, I've been playing in a traditional setting uh, as far as the way I'm holding the drums, although I do often put them on the stand. That's primarily the way that I play because I'll have a multi-percussion setup. So anyways, playing on the large side of the drum. Now, I often use a lot of muffs when I'm in a contemporary context. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in this lesson, using a contemporary pop or rock type context. So let's say a uh, uh, basic two, four beat. So a snare being on every two and every four, or maybe something slightly different, but in that type of context, okay? So like a one, two, three, four. This being one, two, three, four. So like a boom, ta boom, ta ta So let's say I'm the drummer. I'm playing what the drum set would be doing, or I'm playing along with the drummer, but I'm playing something similar to what he might be playing, and perhaps I'm doing it as an intro, maybe even doubling what he's playing. Usually, I don't do that very often. Um, I normally syncopate within what the drummer is doing. But in this context, I want to talk about if I was a drummer playing the bongos in this type of context and some ideas on here. So the muff tone, very important. This is what we're going to start with this lesson, talking about the muff tone and a couple ideas with it. So where the knuckles are on the other side, right where the palm ends there going to your fingers, all the way up to the fingertip, that's where the emphasis is going to be from the rim down, okay? Now I could use a bass for a bass tone, but it's, I'm not gonna get that same low tone. Now depending on how they're mic'd and the room, you can get a real meaty low tone and, and depend how it's tuned as well on the bongos, okay? So I'll do that a lot with flams or a combination between triplets and 16th notes and eighth notes. So. So anyways, this is what I'm often doing here, a muff tone, okay? Now, there's different ways in, in harmonics we can add with the muff tone, but that's the, the basics of what I often do when I'm playing on the large side of the bongos, okay? So all four fingers there, digging right into the drum. Open tones, muff tones. So really practice those muff tones, getting a good, solid muff tone there, okay? Now, as I've talked about or spoken about in previous lessons of every uh, skills that every conga player should develop, that's another video you can check out. I talk about the importance of counting for the sake of improvisation, for the sake of just knowing where you're at. And when we talk about fills, which is what we're gonna talk about more in the next two lessons, it's important to be able to develop or to have this skill of knowing where you're at. So let's say I'm in four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, it's important to be able to master the rhythm like we've spoken about before where I can have a conversation and still play the rhythm but also to be able to count one two three 
four. So we want to be able to develop this. So let's say I do a fill and I need to come back on one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. I'm able to do that because I've developed that skill of counting and knowing where I'm at. So there's some music theory that's involved. Now, all of this is not necessary to play bongos well, but it helps to take your level of playing to the next level. I just said level a whole lot, didn't I? So it's good to develop the skill, and this is something that we'll talk about more in depth, specifically just counting uh, in, another, in another episode. But for now, I just wanna interject that, that that's also important. The next thing, and we're talking about these muffs, is mnemonics, or being able to listen and use um, words and syllables when you're playing. So in the next lesson, I'm gonna talk about a, some fills that I like to do. And if you're not reading or writing music, it's good to be able to hear and to mimic with your mouth the sounds. For instance, if I play this. Now for me, that sounds funny, but for me, every the sound it is is all related to the pitch and each sound is is a specific note for me in my mind so i've developed my own drum language so i can hear something and interpret it and then help teach my own body and mind those rhythms so it's important to do that now even if you are uh, reading and writing in Western music theory, it's still good to to continue to do this. And if you're already doing it, that's awesome. Now, I used to take it for granted that this is something that everybody does in percussion and rhythm, but I found out that it's not necessarily so, especially those who are more classically trained first. So I want to encourage you, if you're doing this, to continue to do it. Um, it's great to, and develop that. Develop your own language. Uh, so when you're practicing, you can you can kind of, it'll help you to uh, interpret and to learn new rhythms. So anyways, that muff and develop counting, okay? But that's the sound. Anyways, this is a short lesson just on the muff sound, playing on the low drum, okay? And the importance of counting and also an encouragement of using mnemonics. In the next lesson, I'll talk about flams and a fill that I like to do a lot that is more reminiscent of pop or rock type contemporary setting. All right, God bless you. Have a smile upon you, see you soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right.